morning, everybody. This is your favorite MS4 coordinator again, Rick Brown. And remember, only you can help us keep our stormwater clean. This morning, we're going to be talking a little bit about rain harvesting. You think of harvesting, you probably think of farmers and fields. And this is kind of like that in a little tiny way. But we also have a surprise guest with us. We have a gentleman from the SWCD, and we would like him to introduce himself. Hi everybody, my name is Michael Herman. I work for the LaPorte County Soil and Water Conservation District, or the SWCD. I'm here a little bit to talk about rain barrels and rain gardens and things of the such. I want to start, start off with, what is this thing here? It's got a little dust, it's got a little dirt on it. That's because it was actually used as a rain barrel. We have a different type. I have two at my house. Basically, what these are for is, you see this little gutter kind of thing here, uh, downspout I mean, you come off your gutters and you put water into a barrel, 50 gallon, 100 gallon, there's different sizes, um, and what you do is, is you, we call it harvesting because the water goes in here and it kind of stays, but there's ways you can release the water, there's ways you can release the water <laughs> with a pump, um, you can do it by gravity. The, it also has connections on it for a hose, a garden hose. We have also, in the past, previously, with a different size and shape of barrels, MS4 has actually been in a sponsor of the painting of these kinds of barrels, where kids in class, in school, younger kids, junior high, et cetera, et cetera, would be in a contest of painting these and make them look all kind of cool. And you've probably seen some of that, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot of that. They make a lot of different rain barrels, and. You can paint them however you want to make them as trendy as you like. There's lots of uses for them. And the main purpose of these rain barrels, right, is to harvest the rain. Uh, and then you can use them for anything you want, whether that's watering your garden or your lawn. And that will save you not only time, but it also saves you from putting that runoff into the sewers and drainage, right? Right. And one thing that's really important about harvesting water is most people have shingles and have roofs on their houses. When we harvest water, it is not for cooking, it's not for your animals to drink, it's not for you to drink, because you know there's stuff on the roofs, you get those little pebbles from your shingles, or you get all those whirly gigs and all that kind of stuff to go in your gutters, even dirt, that kind of stuff. So this is great, as this gentleman Michael right here just said about doing it for uh, plants, your flowers and stuff like that, that's really what it's perfect for. But you don't want to do it for household cooking and that kind of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. You don't want to be ingesting this in any sort of way. It's soft water, so it's great for your plants. Your plants are going to love it. You can save money on your utility bill. Uh, and then, like I said, prevent that water from ending up in our drainage and stormwater, which ultimately reduces the load. Right. that our storm systems have to take. And reducing the load, we've had a lot of questions in our Coffee with Rick Brown series as far as uh, fees and utility fees and all that kind of thing. This is just one little tiny way, as Michael just said, that you're not pushing, putting additional water into the system because it's going on your own ground, it's going on your plant for your own plant harvesting. And mama's going to love the flowers. I mean, it's, it's going to be excellent soft water for that kind of growing. Absolutely, absolutely. And there's many ways you can do this. Uh, not only can you get one of these at a local hardware store, but there's also ways to make your own. If you find a 55-gallon drum of some sort, you can attach hardware to it, uh, a spout, and a filter up at the top to make sure you catch any debris. For a little bit cheaper, you know, if you're a little bit handy, you can get to making your own and catch water in no time. I have actually went to a, a environmental, you know, class before, and part of that class was we had to build a rain barrel. You know, most of these kind of barrels you want to get are going to be plastic, so for you gentlemen and ladies out there, it's going to be pretty easy, really, because you could buy these various items that you attach to it to when it dries, when the glue dries, to put your hose on it and that kind of stuff. And basically this kind of rain barrel has a top in it where it's all like a screen and graded and goes down. But you can actually use like a gooseneck and go right into the top and down and, you, and leave it just a little bit open if you want it. But the key to all this is 
you're going to build your rain barrel and you're going to go wait for the first rain, sit on the porch and have a bowl of tomato soup or whatever you're going to do. And this thing's going to fill up with water and it's going to start spilling out. And you're going to, oh no, oh no. Well, it, you need to make it as you build it. You need to put some of these little places for hoses and stuff and for drainage. And you can also, with this particular rain barrel, it's got a little pump inside. And that pump is electric and you can plug it in and then you can hook this to whatever you want if you wanted to pump the water out. So there's so much you can do with these. And it really doesn't take a lot of knowledge or a lot of handyman kind of stuff, but you just kind of, what do you want to use it for? Where do you want to locate it? Um, I've had people call me, and even when I built my first one, I located it on the corner of my house, thinking, oh, it's going to be out of the way, it's going to be this and that. Uh, and I didn't put some of this drainage on the side in mine. And I can honestly tell you, I'm not a big man or not a big strong man, but it would take a big strong man to move these when they're full of water. Eight pounds a gallon, that's quite a bit, probably 400 <laughs> pounds of water. A 55 gallon drum so yeah you're not going to move that anywhere very easily. One of the little facts that I'm going to say now is that for every inch of rain basically basically we're going to get up to 150 gallons of water for each downspout of a thousand square foot roof with four downspouts. So that's a lot of water that's about 600 gallons that could be put to good use watering your lawn watering your flower beds and that's 600 gallons of water you wouldn't have to pay for uh, from your local utility. Basically, uh, kind of, it's not really a bottom line, but almost, is that um, rain barrels, you can build them in 50 gallon or 100 gallon size capacity barrels. So you can just imagine that's a lot of water. And even if you did, you had four gallon spouts, and like Mike just said, 600 gallons, that's a lot of water that you're going to be capturing. And quite often in our Coffee with Rick Brown series, we get questions about utilities. What are they for? What are they this? What are they that? This is a way of decreasing your utility bills because you're catching your own water. You're not kind of paying for it to run off down the street and all that kind of stuff. If you go down in the description below, you'll find a link to the LaPorte County Soil and Water Conservation District's website where you can find a lot more info about rain barrels and rain gardens and any kind of solutions to run off at your house. First of all, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Thank you much. At SWCD, and uh, we've really enjoyed doing this together. This is our first time doing one together. Uh, I got a feeling we're going to do some more. I sure but, hope. <laughs> <laughs> but remember that when you uh, are going to, to look at our sites and be a subscriber, press that little red button because that will make you a permanent subscriber. So, again, only you can help us keep our stormwater clean. This is one way of doing it and actually using it. For yourself. So have a good day everybody. Thank you. Thank you.